Uh, this is Senate Appropriations, and we're taking up several bills. One is we were holding uh, pending uh, review and a recommendation from Senate Education, and so that's H183, and we have Michelle Childs here um, to uh, run through the amendment. We had already, just to remind committee members, um, we had put uh, the funding for the forensic nursing um, piece already in the budget, which was part of that bill. I think Senator Sears referenced that as well. And so what we have now is um, possibly a small amount of money, I think in the vicinity of 12,000 that's associated with um, uh, a commission or a study group or whatever. So that's what Michelle, you're gonna to present to us today? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So if you would um, um, uh, review this um, recommendation and what the, um, uh, Senate Education Committee is uh, has um, um, decided how they want to move forward with that section of the bill. Sure. And does everyone have a copy of this amendment? It's um, a, from Senator Lyons, Campion, Chittenden, mm -hmm. Hope, Birchlick, and Terenzini. Mm -hmm. Dated uh, May 7th. That's my initials up at the top. Is it on our web page? It's on the web page, and I also sent it as a PDF earlier today. Oh, okay, good. And so you might recall that last week uh, when you took up H183, uh, 183 and you, dis you did discuss this a little bit as to, because the House bill had this appropriation in it, Senate Judiciary removed the council along with the appropriation and then with the forensic nursing money going into the budget, you're kind of like, well, why is this even here? Because there's no appropriation in it. And so we did talk about the council. Um, what it was is there was a previous uh, a <clears throat> harm task force um, in which there were two legislative members, including um, Senator Baruth, and they had recommended the establishment of this larger council to continue the work um, and to meet four times a year to collaborate right on sh basically sharing information amongst all the different campuses and kind of sharing best practices. And so, um, so it's just the Senate education made several just little small tweaks to the language with regard to membership, things like that. They added a, an additional college student. Um, they changed the duties just a little bit after listening to uh, UVM. But I think the, the primary differences for your purposes are that um, they did shorten the uh, the uh, length of the the council before it was a seven year repeal. Yeah. We thought and that was kind of a long period of time. It's now four years, so it is shorter. That's um, and as I mentioned, um, there's they're they're only permitted to meet four times a year. Staffed by the Network Against Domestic and Sexual Violence, and that was really kind of a result of there not being an obvious body to staff it. Um, there's no legislators um, or such on that committee, um, and the network volunteered to do it. And so the money um, <coughs> creations put the money in going to the Center for Crime Victim Services that would then issue it as a grant to the network because House Appropriations didn't want the money going directly to the network because it's not a state entity. And so what you have, um, you have the creation of, of the council in section six in the Center Alliance Amendment, you have the sunset after four years in section seven. And then for the appropriations, um, it's broken into two pieces. One um, is subsection A for staffing. And um, so that's for FY22, so for four meetings. Um, and then subsection B is the uh, appropriation for um, per diems and uh, expenses. I will note there that House Appropriations established that number based on there being two students on the council. And they thought that those would probably be the only folks who are members of the council who wouldn't otherwise be compensated for their attendance at that meeting. Um, Senate education did add at the request of Senate Judiciary one more student. And so you might want to consider whether or not that, that number for in subsection B and section H should be raised in consideration of adding an additional student. Um, mm -hmm. 
Then section nine is the effective date section, and that has the council and the appropriation taking effect on passage, and the remaining sections continue to take effect on, on July 1st. Um, Stephanie, do you have a, a thought about, is there a 12, um, is there, I can't find the amendment. I'm sorry, I'm trying to go through all of Chrissy's emails, and I've got the other bills, but I don't have the this amendment. Would you like me to put it up on the screen? Would it be helpful or do you not like doing that? Well, um, maybe if we can, my question is, is there a specific amount? Is it 12,000 or is it just that they will be compensated consistent it's, with? Um, for staffing, it's $11,990. And for per diems and expenses, it's $1,010. And so it is, uh, 13,000 total. 13. But that that uh, 1,020, if we add an extra student, should be 1,520, right? Well, no, I think there's, uh, there may, you're estimating more than the students in the, in that 1020 or 1010 or whatever. No, well, appro house appropriations was, was just counting on there being two people who would request per diems and expenses, assuming it would be the students because everyone okay. else is doing it as part of their other day job. Okay. So we're talking about um, 600 then. No, 10, if, 10 by two is five. It's five by five. So five you'd add I, I rounded it up to 600, Bobby. Oh. <laughs> You're rounding down. Um, yes, we either do 1500 or 1800. Um. <laughs> I definitely think we should discuss for another hour. Well, I think so. <laughs> All afternoon. Stephanie, um, do you have a thought? Um, I don't know. If, uh, let's see. I don't know why we have to go from 15 to 18. We could simply go uh to 1600 and let it go yeah fine. fine with me i hate I, which is a little bit enough but um it's good well, they'll have some change left all right so this is this is general fund uh -oh. so um i'm not following i'm sorry i'm not quite following the i was doing something else but i'm sorry about that the is this for the the Funding is, council. Yeah, the council. So the, the, the amount that's in on the house side is 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 remaining is thirteen thousand. Um, because the house bill came out with fifty three thousand. We moved forty for the forensic nurse, uh -huh. and so the appropriation that's in now is you're saying is at eighteen hundred or. Um. Well, we because you're adding one more student. The question yeah. is whether the um the the um 13,000 needs to be increased a bit to accommodate the additional cost of the per diem and expenses of that student and if uh two two unpaid people was 1020 then yeah. 1010 uh, for two then right. um then if we add another one the question becomes do we we need to add a bit more money um so that we have the funding for that additional a student. 15, um, 15. Since this is all an estimate, I, I, I mean, I think we can actually go with the thirteen thousand that's that's available, and then you know if there's a if there, there's a need to, to fund more, it's a okay. it's a very small budget adjustment item. Yeah. You know. Okay. That's all right. That's so the, what you're that, saying is, um, let it, let it go with the addition, um, and that um, that for this small amount, if it's necessary to do a budget adjustment for it. If it can't be accommodated, then we'll deal yeah. with it. I yeah. move we we support section eight for thirteen thousand dollars. Okay. Second it. Okay. So um and we don't need to do anything to amend it because that's already in the bill that it came over from yep. the house. Is, is that appropriation still remaining in the amendments, Michelle? No, the it so it it the way the Senate Judiciary had had jurisdiction and they voted it out without the appropriation. And so now you have it without the appropriation, but Senate Judiciary asked Senate Ed to take it up informally. They are recommending 
adding the council back in with the appropriation. So it's a floor amendment from all the members of Senate education. Okay, okay. so we never have... took, yeah. All right, so we never officially took the money out. Um, it got um, taken out, put back in before it came really, before we're acting on it. So is, the, is the House, is the Senate and a pro amendment at 13,000 right now, or is it at a different number? It, it is, but I just want to make clear that House, I mean, Senate Ed never had jurisdiction. So the bill, does, you know, like as the amendment has come to you, there is no, and it's going to be a, on the floor that this individual instance of amendment is going to propose to amend the judiciary report. And then once that gets accepted. Which will include the money. Yes. So, so we just... We could just say, as the Appropriations Committee, we approve the expenditure yeah. of thirteen. Yeah. Well, you know, the uh, appropriation of thirteen thousand as included in the amendment, uh, um, because that will get voted on first. Then the Education Committee no. amendment, I and don't then know. I don't not. know. I can I can check with the Senate Secretary, but because it's not a committee amendment, it's a individual instance. So they'll go to Judiciary, then they'll go to Appropriations. But I can see if. They and take the other one in between. Okay, well, we'll figure that out. I think the, okay. we want to uh, move the bill favorably with that, um, um, with the provision um, to uh, appropriate 13,000, which the House had already done. It's already um, counted for, yep. And already accounted for in, on the bottom line. Why don't I just um, wing it on the floor and see what we need? To do? All right, so I'm going to suggest um, that we. Um, take a vote and we have a motion to um to uh, um the motion is to support the education committee yeah. amendment right which would uh have a 12 a thirteen thousand dollar appropriation so um okay i've just had all my whole file fall on the floor and then we'll vote the bill out separately um because yeah. we have to vote the bill out yeah, I guess in this yeah. case, we kind of have to because we're not amending um, right. the bill. It's, so right. yes, yeah, so I guess we'll have to do a two step. So we have a motion um, to um, uh, uh, support for, the I don't know, education, to support the education amendment, amendment uh, that carries a $13,000 appropriation. That motion has been made by Senator Sears and a seconded by Senator Starr. Senator Starr. All right. Unless there's further discussion, we'll vote um, on uh, supporting the appropriation that will be reflected in the uh, Senate Ed Amendment. Senator Ballin. Senator Baru. Uh, yes. Oh, there she is. I'm Senator here. I'm going to be on screen in just a couple minutes. So I'm wondering if I can vote yes and then show you on screen that I'm voting yes. <coughs> okay. I, okay. I'm sure I'll, we can do that. I will come, come back to you once you're visible. Thank you. Okay, Senator Baruth, he, yes. Senator Nitka. Yes. Senator Sears. Yes. Senator Starr. Yes. Senator Westman. Yes. Senator Kitchell. Yes. Okay, I, I believe that'll be 7-0 once Senator Ballant is mm -hmm. on the screen. <laughs> All right, so now um, we need uh, a motion mm -hmm. to move the bill favorably. I'll move it. Okay, it's uh, moved by Senator Starr, seconded by Senator Baruth. Um, we will vote now. Senator Ballin. Yes, same situation. <laughs> <laughs> Senator Baruth, yes. Senator Nitka. Yes. Senator Sears. Yes. Senator Starr. Yes. Yes. Senator Westman. Yes. And Senator Kitchell. Yes. Okay. And Senator, who's the reporter? Um, I am. Sherry, Senator I'm Sears. A reporter okay. All right. And can so, I just get a little clarity for the Senate Secretary's office? Uh -huh. So, you know, I do my, my email. I'm going to say Senate Appropriations has voted out H183 favorably as amended by Senate Judiciary. But additionally, they will be supporting a floor amendment amendment from Senate Education. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Um, that, that's yes. Technically that, correct. That, it's yeah. from individuals, right? Yeah. Well, well that's what confuses everything. But yeah. I, I can send them. I can send a separate email to uh, to Bloomer 
and copy everybody because I think that the members of the of the amendment are going to want to kind of know what the gist is and the. I would say that's fine. Chrissy and I can follow up. Okay, great. I'm going to see you on mine as well. Okay. All right, and Thank then you. Senator Sears is a reporter and will confirm the uh, vote. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, Thanks. Now our next um, uh, bill is H one twenty three. The next H122, and I'm going to get Amarin to join us, right? 122, I'm sorry. Senator Kitchell? Yes. Would you like me to send Senator White's note that had a little a brief explanation? Yeah, that would be good. Um, I, the emails are coming in so fast. It's yeah, I'm, I'm having to scroll through. Um, Perfect. I'll send it right now. So everyone's got a copy. Okay, you should all be receiving an email from me any second. Great. <clears throat> Where's the appropriation? I don't see any. Hey, Stephanie. Yeah. Am I right that the 10 million in PCB testing in the contingency fund is general fund? Yeah, the, the money we put into the environmental contingency fund is 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 general fund. That it's okay. not 10 million for PCB, it's no, five million. No, four, yeah. Sorry, four I was and short, half and half. Yeah. shorthanding but, there. But it is it is general fund. Okay. Um it may be given, and, given and the guidance something that we want to, you know. Can you rem remind me? So it goes into the contingency fund, and then does it move from there to Department of Health? No, uh, the five hundred thousand to the Department of Health is directly appropriated now in your bill. Okay. So, so it's it's actually nine point five that went into the contingency fund because five hundred went directly to the Department of Health, and four point five of that nine point five is dedicated to the PCB testing through a &R. Through a &R, right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> OK. We couldn't use uh, ARCA funds for that testing? We didn't think so, because it's a pre-existing, pre-pandemic um, piece. I'm not sure if the guidance that we got yesterday opens it up or not. I'll check with folks. But um, at this point, we don't, we don't think so. Um, so what we have here um, is the email from Jeanette White that um, talks about local emergency planning. And I guess, Stephanie, you're familiar with this. It's not new money. It's just how it's going out. Uh, let me, uh, let me get into my inbox. I'm in the wrong spot here. Okay. So it's the only money is... It's the uh, annual budget in the HASCHEM fund for uh, LEPCSs. It's normally divided up, but now it'll be devoted to statewide in its entirety. 
It's not new money. They just are transitioning it to a single LEPC. I'm, I'm just getting caught up on this. I just, this is the first time I'm seeing this issue. Is this Amber going to speak to us about this? She is. She's in another committee and trying to get her to come on over now. And then she's also going to speak to 135 with Senator Polina. All right. And 135 is. So. Um, 135. This, this one that we're on is they want to. It's, is it the 52,000 they want to? Yeah, they, rather than they're just putting it all into one fund, I guess. Yeah. And 135 is the F State Ethics Commission. Yeah, and they want an attorney and they've got the money in the budget. Okay. So Amory does send her apologies. She got stuck in a walkthrough and she's going to be here as soon as she can, but it sounds like you might be able to carry on without her. It's a smaller appropriation, but I'll look to for you. All right. Well, what we know is what Senator White said, which was that she didn't think it was necessary that um, if she could not, she's doing some sticky stuff with the broadband. I don't know what that means. Um, oh, that was the public records. Was that it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so this is the annual budget that's normally divided between 13 will now be devoted to the statewide. And my question is, does this change the appropriation at all? How are we appropriating this money out? Uh, it's probably within the ANR or actually the, the emergency management budget um, uh -huh. as, as a grant to go out. It's probably embedded in there because um, this is emergency see response it doesn't look like it's new money it looks like it's changing the way we would you know distribute an existing appropriation an existing amount of money within the appropriation yeah that's all i can see it doesn't change any money it's just that it's going um and as i when i look through this i don't see any anything that would add you know i'm scrolling through the the state emergency response commission is where the special things created. And, and then the locals have to match it with a 25%, right? Hmm. It says this is not new money, but we'll just trans, uh, transition to a single LEPC. So. And so it actually still is actually going out when you get to page 13 of. 16. Um, that's what's a little bit confusing. So it, it, it's um, it, it, it's still being distributed. It starts as an annual grant from the Commissioner of Public Safety, the total annual grant amount. Um, and it's special fund dollars. Um, it looks like it's sort of residual of the old radiological emergency response plan funds. Um, but the total uh, shall divide the total annual grant amount equally among the locals. So it's still going out to the local emergency planning commissions. Yeah, not to exceed 52,000. Yeah. But it says it'll, it normally was divided up, but now it's going to go through a statewide something yeah. or other. But it says it's going to be uh, an amount equal among the local emergency planning committees. So I guess everybody's going to get the same amount. <clears throat> well, it certainly doesn't have any impact on the spending because it's just how um, an existing yeah. uh, le uh, level of um, amount of money right. is um, distributed. So do we want to... Um, uh, and there's still a 25% local match grant requirement unless it's waived by the, the state commission. So All right, it, so we're, we're kind of floundering come? here. We don't have the ledge council person and we don't have the reporter of the bill. So um, what we yeah. have is um, uh, uh, what seems to be a fairly modest amount of money um, with language that would just um, change how it is distributed the match is probably still unchanged. I don't know. Um, yeah. And um, so 
do we want to um I I would move, move bill? S S122 as received. Okay. Um just out of curiosity, did it need to come to us? Well, there's money in it. Well, but I mean if if things if the amounts are unchanged, um Still needs to come to us, Rich? Yep, it, uh, it has to come to us. Okay. I think because it says that the commissioner shall mm -hmm. give out grants not to exceed is I probably see. the triggering piece, but I'll, I'll see if it went through the... Um... That's all right. I was just curious. Yeah. All right, so uh, Senator Starr has moved the bill favorably as received. Shall I call the roll? No, I need a second. Oh. All seconded. Okay, Senator Westman. All right. Um, so uh, we're going to uh, operate here somewhat on well for fifty two thousand. Oh, there, there is section the um, there is a per diem on page one. The the climate council piece, and that may have triggered it as well. Um, there's. The, fu the funding is an A and R already for the Vermont Climate Council, right? Um, but it gives it moves the per diem up from fifty to a hundred, and it's subject to available budgeted dollars. So that's I skipped right over that first amendment. Is ever are all uh, councils like that or anything moving to one hundred, or is that just no? It's no. just it's just the Vermont Climate Council that this amendment would move to, from the normal statutory. $50 a day to $100 a day for those that aren't. Why is that happening? Is there a special reason? And that's the second time we're doing that. Yeah, we did it week. for 250 um, just last week for, and it was um, because of the, um, the amount of time that it was gonna take with, uh, from people with very specialized body of knowledge. What is that um, on the broadband bill? Yeah, well. Yeah, that's yes, that was that was. Yeah, I mean the the logic behind keeping everybody at fifty has always been everybody's at fifty. Yeah. Because I know when we did the liquor and lottery, there was you know pressure to move on per diems for them. Um, so we're we're entering a world I fear where we're going to have to up the per diem for everybody. I, I it sounds that way, or or we're going to have to be able to clearly distinguish. Um, those um, positions that require people with a, 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 a very specialized body of knowledge or skills or information um, that you might not have to have for some boards. But um, th was that in the House Pass version? No, it's, a, it's part of the amendment from Senate um, GovOps. But it is, as you, it, when you read Section 11A that they're adding, it says it's, it's limited to one year. It's limited to... FY22. It's only this this bump in the per diem isn't permanent for the Climate Council. It's only until June 2022, it says. You know, I, I think what we're running into, though, and it's dangerous, I think it's yeah. Orwellian that, um, you know, some groups are more equal than right. other groups. All groups are equal, but some are more equal than others. And I, I think it's a dangerous road to be going down. I would guess that the people on the transportation board feel that they're very important. To, let's and just, the look at control board and etc. So, let's just leave it the way it, sh it is for everybody else, except for the broadband people. Yeah, I don't understand the uh, the bump for one year. Then uh, maybe uh, we're all, all we're doing is circular discussion because we don't have uh, anybody to testify, and I I think that perhaps um, the chair's <clears throat> description and the focus on the just the distribution. Um, of, of this bill, this bill is obviously more than just putting out the 52, it, it, I don't know, it, it, maybe we shouldn't be um, uh, making a decision on it until we have additional information as to what is the justification because we're absolutely uh, opening the door around everyone arguing that uh, everybody's board um, should be compensated at a higher level and, uh, and um, 
in some ways, it, it begs a much larger discussion around um, equity. This ad hoc approach to, um, uh, to the per diems is troublesome at best. Yeah, so I, I would, I've always uh, I've always felt that senators deserve more than House members and pay. <laughs> Would this be a good time oh, to raise that issue? No, uh, we can, it, it, it isn't believing. It is um, we we deserve more. I'll withdraw that motion, Madam Chair. If you okay. want, and we'll get more testimony. I think I think we need I think we need to. Um, and I think um, we need to have an explanation uh, as to why um, this, this um, um, we are departing from the $50 per day. Yeah, um, I, especially because since the house I, didn't go I back. suspect, for example, the Human Services Board. Yeah, yeah. Is, yeah. It's hugely, hugely complicated and the cases that are coming before that. Um, yep. So I, um, I, 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 but this came from government operations, and they should be wow. particularly attuned to the whole precedent that's being set here. Uh, money yeah. is no object in that room. <laughs> well, you know, maybe the fifty dollars a day is it really is. Uh, uh, maybe it does need to be looked at, but it should be looked at, I think, in a much more um, systematic way rather than ad hoc arguments about this particular board requires it because of this versus the 50 for everybody else. Uh, so I, I, I'm not prepared, I think, in light of that comment, Stephanie, in terms of the change for us to um, simply move it because that is a fairly significant um, policy or, or not, it's, well, a policy discussion, but also that comes with uh, a financial implication. Big point, and it's a hundred percent increase. Well, you know, you know, when you deal with small numbers, Bobby, your percentages can really well, move. I've served for 70, 60 years on different boards, and for the first forty, never got a dime. And well, I then fifty felt, would look good to you. I felt good about it. Well, if you want to serve, you shouldn't have to be paid to serve. You should do it because you want to do it. Wait a um, minute. Wait a minute, Bobby. That could carry over to us, Bobby. Yeah, Bobby. I mean, you, we don't want New Hampshire rates. You don't want what? Yeah. New Hampshire 100, rates. Hundred. Oh, no. Hundred <laughs> every two um, years. So we've decided we're not voting on that. We have Senator Ballin here. Do you want to put your vote in in person on H one eighty three? Yes, please. Okay. Yes. Okay. And then one twenty two. Um, we're not moving on. Oh, and uh, Becca, we also did the, the education amendment. amendment. Yeah, right. I assume yes. you're a yes on that. In the affirmative, yeah. yes. <clears throat> yeah. um, so, um, one twenty-two. I I think we should hold, and we're oh. going to need more testimony. Yep. Yep. All right. So. Um, we're going to have to break because I have, I have to, um, I don't think we can do anything more today in seven minutes. Okay. Um, Stephanie, our, so we, we've only moved, I've lost track. We moved the one bill, 183. Yeah. Yes. Uh, 122 we're holding. 135 is... Is the, well, and Anthony Polina was coming in on, and that's adding an attorney to the ethics commission. Yep. And and I did send him a note telling him when we schedules Senator Polina and Amarin. She can come back. I'll get them both to come back in on one twenty two and one thirty four. Oh, one thirty five. Yeah, and they're they're both House bills. Correct. Okay. And then we, there, then there's the miscellaneous tax bill. Did we actually get possession of that? Yes, we do have possession. Um, that's 436, I believe. And we have Abby and Senator Cummings coming in. If the committee can agree to start at one tomorrow, it would really help out Senator Cummings because um, it's something she needs to move. And um, if we could all meet at one tomorrow, we can get that right out of the gates. Okay. All right. So why don't we um, adjourn for today with the understanding that tomorrow we're going to start at one o'clock. And we have three bills, and that will take care of the, all the bills that we have 
um, refer to us? That's Is that correct. right? Okay. All right. Um, so um, I guess um, we should have a communication back to Senator White um, asking what is the justification for the increase in the per diem for the Climate Council? And especially um, explaining the one year bump, because I assume then it reverts back to $50. I, yes. I think so. The That's one, odd. That's odd. Yeah, the 135 bill isn't, there isn't much to that. It's well, I don't know. They ha may have money right now. The question is that building an ongoing base obligation. Yeah. Well, the ethics yeah. commission. Yes, yes. Um, it would be. I have a, a somewhat similar question about the miscellaneous ed bill, which hasn't, I don't think, has come to us yet. That that adds fifty thousand dollars for a consultant for the Ethnic Studies Commission. And um, so I'm, I'm, that's something we don't typically do either, is staff out, this is for legal advice, I think, um, staff out committees or change the per diem. So there's a couple of different similar issues percolating in terms of exceptional funding for boards and committees. So I, I don't know. Is, if, that a it, is that a house bill too that came over? It's on the calendar, um, but it's on, I think it's on the notice calendar. What's, uh, what's the number? Uh, I don't remember Alice, but it was, it was at the bottom of the notice calendar, I think. Uh. <clears throat> okay, well, I'm gonna, um, Maybe we can take a look at that too, Philip. Um, uh, Stephanie, if you could maybe have someone, Mark Perrault, take a look at that. Since it's related to education, what it is exactly and what is the funding source? S-115, is that it, Philip? Yeah, I, I think that's so right. It's changes in education laws. Yeah, and and in okay. there is a, a $50,000 appropriation to the Ethnic Studies Committee. It, that must have come back from the house then. I think so. Okay. Well, we'll take a look at that as well. So oh. I'm going to adjourn the committee because um, I have to uh, go on another call in three minutes. And then we have a uh, committee of conference. I gather we haven't, Chrissy, that's still on. It hasn't been canceled yet. It is still yeah. not. What time is that? Three o'clock. Three o'clock. It, it will be a relatively short one, I think. There's a handful of things that the House can put on the table, but they weren't okay. didn't have a significant. Okay, so um, uh, we'll tune in at three and wrap up a few more things and then call it a day, and then we'll start tomorrow at one. You mean wow. we'll tune in today? Our, this committee will tune in today at three?